We have already evidenced motions induced directly by interfacial tensions, like the bursting of a soap film. Varying surface tension along an interface is also a means to displace fluids, as we shall see in this part. There are mainly two ways to do that, which are respectively temperature differences and gradients of chemical composition. Very generally, the surface tension of a liquid decreases with temperature and it goes to zero at the critical point. If we heat or cool locally the surface of a quiescent liquid, a gradient of tension is created along the interface, which can no longer be in mechanical equilibrium. In this experiment, we have deposited a layer of oil with a millimetric thickness on a thin brass plate. When we heat locally the metal plate with a soldering iron, we see that the layer becomes thinner at the hot spot. This means that the liquid moves away from the hot region. Conversely, when we cool locally the metal plate with a chunk of ice, the liquid moves towards the cold spot. These kinds of flows, induced by a special variation of surface tension, were interpreted for the first time in 1855 by the British physicist James Thomson. However, it is the name of the Italian Carlo Marangoni, who also made seminal contribution to the subject some 15 years later, which is associated to the phenomenon now commonly called the Marangoni effect. We have just seen that uh, surface tension gradients can generate flows, but we would like to understand it in more detail, and in particular we would like to compute the order of magnitude of the flow which is generated by these uh, tension gradients. So the question that we're asking is at uh, what uh, Velocity is the liquid moving. So I'm sketching here the layer of liquid. Uh, this is the bottom of the tank holding the liquid. And this is the liquid air interface. So we have here at point A uh, our soldering iron, which will increase the temperature to a value which I will call T plus. And here at point B, uh, the uh, liquid is cooler at a temperature that we'll call T minus. Now I would like to compute the difference in surface tension between A and B. So uh, the tension gamma A is equal to gamma B plus the variation of surface tension with temperature D gamma over DT multiplied by T plus minus T minus. This is positive, but we have seen that very generally the surface tension variation with the temperature is negative. So this is negative, and a result, as a result, the surface tension at A is smaller than the surface tension at B. And if I draw these uh, tensions on the interface, so at the tension at B is larger than the tension at A. And as a result, there is a net force on the piece of interface between points A and B, and this net force is gamma A minus gamma B, sorry, minus gamma A. So as a result, the liquid is driven from point B, A to point B, that is the liquid is driven away from the hot spot at a velocity which I will call U. And to compute the order of magnitude of this velocity, I will have to balance the viscous friction resulting from the flow and the driving force. So within the liquid, I have a shear flow like this, with velocity u at the top and uh, velocity zero on the bottom. And if I call h the thickness of the liquid layer, the viscous stress sigma is proportional to the uh, viscosity of the fluid, eta, multiplied by the velocity gradient, which is u divided by h. So this is a force per unit length in this drawing, which is uh, 
uh, drawn by unit uh, size in the third direction. So I have to multiply by the distance AB to get a force. And this uh, balances the difference in tension, uh, which is gamma B uh, minus gamma A, which is equal to uh, minus d gamma dt multiply by the temperature difference delta t. So I can get uh, the value of the velocity u, which I will write here. So u is given by uh, this term d gamma divided by dt multiplied by delta t divided by the distance ab. with a minus sign, so this is the variation of surface tension with temperature. This is the temperature gradient. And I need to multiply by H uh, divided by the viscosity. The first remark on this result is that the velocity U is proportional directly to the thickness of the liquid. And we have to remind that uh, for pressure-driven flows or gravity-driven flows, in a similar situation, the velocity would be proportional to the square of h. And if h is a small quantity, then we can realize immediately that the Marangoni flow, which is given by this expression, can be quicker than a pressure-driven flow. So for small uh, uh, systems in which thicknesses are uh, small, uh, Marangoni flows can be quite effective compared to pressure-driven or uh, gravity-driven flows. To get an order of magnitude of this in our experiment, we have to uh, get these numbers. That the di temperature difference is on the order of 10 degrees C. The uh, variation of surface tension with temperature is typically minus 0 0.1 millinewton per meter. Uh, in this case, the viscosity of the uh, liquid is 10 times the viscosity of water, that is 10 to the minus 2 pascal seconds. The thickness of the layer H is typically 1 millimeter, and the distance AB on which the temperature gradient is established is on the order of 1 centimeter. If you put all these numbers together, we get a velocity u, which is on the order of one centimeters per second, which is what we observe uh, typically in the experiment, as you can see. It is a velocity which is uh, already uh, rather large uh, for this system. A final point on this result, if we look at this equality, uh, which I will uh, write here in a slightly different way, If I look at the, uh, the stresses, the viscous stresses, which is eta u divided by h, uh, so I'll write it stress here. This is the surface stress. It is going to be equal to uh, d gamma divided by dt multiplied by delta t divided by ab, uh, ignoring the sign uh, in this expression, delta t divided by AB. Now if the distance AB uh, goes to a very small value that I can call dx, I can rewrite this as d gamma divided by dt, multiply by uh, the small temperature difference dt divided by dx. So this is the temperature gradient and I can rewrite this as the surface tension gradient, d gamma divided by dx. So the mechanical equilibrium of the interface tells us that the stress at the interface must balance the surface tension gradient. And this is true whatever the cause of the surface tension gradient. Here, the tension gradient is caused by temperature difference, but we will see later that 
There are other possible ways to modify the surface tension, but uh, this equality will remain true and it will enable us to compute the velocity knowing the uh, surface tension gradient. A drop on a substrate with a non-uniform temperature is likely to move under Marangoni forces. In order to make this effect spectacular, we can use a textured solid impregnated with oil which minimizes pinning, whose action opposes such motion. In this infrared movie, you can see both side and top views showing the behavior of a water drop deposited on a solid impregnated with silicon oil. Placed on the hot part of the solid, whose temperature is 70 degrees Celsius, the drop first heats up until it matches the temperature of the substrate and then moves to the cold, 50 degrees colder, at a velocity of typically 1 mm per second. This drop is drawn by the contrast of the oil surface tension between its two edges. Surface tension being larger on the cold side, the capillary force attracts the drop towards this region. When a layer of liquid, a few millimeters thick, is heated uniformly from below, a cellular pattern appears revealed either by the motion of very fine platelets advected by the fluid or by dyed liquid added to the layer. This pattern is an assembly of convection cells in which hot fluid rises from the bottom to the liquid air interface, cools down and then sinks back to the bottom. The size of the cells is comparable to the thickness of the layer. This phenomenon was discovered and studied in detail by Henry Bernard at the beginning of the 20th century. Lord Rayleigh gave a theoretical explanation based on the difference of buoyancy between hot and cold fluid regions, but it turns out that, in the case of thin enough layers as in Bernard's experiment, Marangoni flows due to the surface tension gradient between hot and cold spots on the interface are responsible for the development of the cellular pattern. The Rayleigh-Bernard instability, as it's commonly called now, is a model system which was thoroughly used in the 1970s to study the transition to chaos and turbulence. When we pour an alcoholic beverage such as wine, brandy or whiskey in a glass, we can deposit a thin layer on the wall by swirling the liquid around. Gravity should drain the liquid back into the volume. However, we observe very often that the layer persists for several minutes and even that thicker regions develop at the top of the film before forming large drops that eventually move downwards. The paradoxical observation that liquid can go up is explained by Marangoni flows, now driven by a gradient of concentration of ethanol within the thin layer. What is the origin of the tears of wine? As always, we start with a sketch. We have the wall of the glass here, and we swirled uh, the beverage against this wall so that we get a film which is contacting the rest of the liquid. So the typical height here is L, the thickness of the film is H, and we must understand how uh, this liquid can, let's say, resist gravity. For that, we can remember that the beverage is made of a mixture of water and alcohol. For a wine, the content of alcohol could be 13%, for instance. For whiskey, it can be 45%. And alcohol is more volatile than, than uh, water. And so we expect that in the film, which has a large surface area and uh, a small volume, uh, evaporation effects will be dominant, so that the top of the film uh, will be with less alcohol than the bottom of the film, and surface tension is sensitive to the content of alcohol. The surface tension of alcohol is typically 20 mN per meter, while the surface tension of water is 70 mN per meter. And so the region of the top is at a surface tension gamma plus compared to the bottom, which is gamma minus. And this creates a force which is indeed opposing gravity. So with that, we can calculate the possible balance between this force and gravity. Uh, we have a difference of surface tension delta gamma, and this difference might balance the weight of the film, which is written 
per unit length in the direction perpendicular to the blackboard. And this weight is density times G times the thickness of the film times the height of the film. Uh, well, uh, we can uh, deduce that a film can climb against gravity if it is thinner than a quantity which is delta gamma divided by rho g l. And here, as very often uh, it's important to put numbers, delta gamma can be 50, 10 to the minus 3, rho is typically 10 to the 3, g is 10, and l is the size of a glass, which is, let's say, 5 centimeters. And so we have here a nice simplification, and we get 10 to the minus 4, which is 100 micrometers. This is relatively thick. Uh, if we swirl the liquid as we did in the glass, we coat the glass with a film whose thickness is typically given by the landau levitch law, and it is, uh, let's say, uh, tenths of micrometers. So it fully satisfies this uh, inequality. So we can understand that a thin film can resist gravity and even climb despite gravity. Then the question is, what is the velocity at which the film is climbing? And for getting this velocity, we have to balance the viscous resistance with the driving force, which is the difference of surface tension. So this is something we can do. The viscous stress, which is the viscous force per unit area, is a coefficient of viscosity times the gradient of velocity. And the velocity here varies when um, uh, across the thickness because of the no slip boundary condition at the solid surface. And this uh, is balanced by the gradient of surface tension along the z direction, which is a vertical direction. So if we deduce from this uh, equation uh, scaling law, uh, we can rewrite that in eta typical velocity of the film divided by the typical thickness of the film uh, equals delta gamma over L. So we get this scaling relationship, eta V over H is delta gamma over L, from which we can deduce the velocity of the rise, uh, which is V equals um, delta gamma over eta uh, multiplied by H over L. If we put numbers, V is expected to be, well, you remember this is 50, 10 to the minus 3. Eta is the viscosity of a mixture of water and alcohol, so it's 10 to the minus 3. H, well, we said that when we swirl the liquid, we get a film which is about 10 micrometers in thickness, and L is the size of the glass, 5 centimeters. And so we get a velocity which is amazingly high considering the, the, the thickness of the film, uh, around one centimeter per second. Indeed, Marangoni flows are very efficient to drive liquids uh, in uh, thin films. Uh, now, we have a scenario for the uh, formation of the tears in, in a glass of, of wine. Uh, we understand that uh, there is this difference of surface tension between the bottom and the top of the, of the film which drives the liquid upwards with this large velocity. And this liquid uh, accumulates at the top of the film and there a rim forms and this rim is constantly fed by uh, this flow. And so uh, it grows. Uh, it's a rim, so it tends to be unstable. It tends to make drops and it makes drops when its thickness uh, typically reaches the thickness given by this equation, uh, above which it's not possible to keep the liquid in the field of gravity. Gravity becomes dominant, and we have uh, the flow, the logical flow of the tears, uh, which is uh, moving uh, downwards.
a centimetric drop of pentanol is deposited on a bath of water saturated with pentanol so as to avoid a simple dissolution of the drop. The alcohol lowers the surface tension of the mixture and if it starts to spread on one side of the drop, the drop is pulled by the difference in surface tension between both sides. At the centimetric scale, surface tension is not strong enough to resist the shearing imposed by the fluid flow and the drop fragments in smaller droplets, which in turn move and recompose with time. The combination of tension gradients induced by evaporation and capillary instability of rims can lead to sophisticated patterns and even to an emulsification process. Here, a few drops of a mixture of water and isopropanol, dyed in blue, are deposited on a bath of sunflower oil. The water-alcohol mixture spreads rapidly to a radius of a few centimeters and almost immediately it expels drops from a rim at its periphery. The generation of droplets continues for a few minutes until the initial drop contracts and eventually disappears. Finally, the tiny droplets created in the process aggregate in clusters owing to capillary attraction. We saw this remarkable phenomenon uh, which is a kind of uh, liquid firework and it's interesting to, to try to understand where it comes from. So what is the origin of the firework? We start with oil, sunflower oil, uh, of course, which is strictly horizontal, and we deposit this drop made of water plus isopropanol. Uh, and the first thing we see is that this mixture spreads at the surface of the oil. So we have a film here, which is propagating with some velocity. And the reason of this spreading is related to surface tension. The surface tension of the oil is 32 millinewton per meter. And we need to be very precise here. The surface tension of the mixture is about 25 millinewton per meter, provided the content in isopropanol is larger than 40%, which it is at the beginning of this experiment. And the surface tension between oil and water, water meaning the mixture here, is about 5 millinewton per meter. And so we immediately deduce that the spreading parameter here, S, is gamma oil minus gamma water minus gamma oil water, which corresponds to the balance of forces, which are gamma oil minus gamma oil water minus gamma water, is positive, as you can see, slightly positive. Of course, in this experiment, isopropanol evaporates. And so because of this evaporation, uh, what we have is a rise of the surface tension of water. And also, which is less obvious, a rise of the surface tension between oil and water. This means that at the end of the film, where evaporation has been efficient, we get a spreading parameter which becomes negative. And so the situation is quite different. We have the oil, and now the spreading stops at some point. And at this point, we have gamma plus here. We have gamma minus there, because evaporation uh, is uh, less effective inside the drop. And we have a Marangoni flow along the film. As a consequence, uh, slightly later, uh, we have a rim which appears at the edge of this drop and this rim grows and because it's a rim, because of its cylindrical geometry, uh, it destabilizes in droplets. And so this is the origin of the firework, the fact that there is a production of little drops at the edge of the main one. And much later, 
uh, when we have less liquid, when isopropanol evaporated everywhere, we have a global contraction because now the spreading parameter is negative everywhere. And so we uh, understand qualitatively the origin of this very beautiful phenomenon. 